Welcome to the Gigaspace ZAP WAN gateway demonstration. This demonstration will show mirroring between two separate Gigaspaces clusters where data in each is replicated to the other. Peer caching systems do this sort of thing all the time, honestly. If you have two peer nodes, let's call them A and B, and peer A receives a data item 1, this data item will be propagated to peer B momentarily. However, systems like this have a heavy cost. They want all of your no nodes on the same network. They're not suited for wide area access. WAN access tends to be bolted on and have some serious performance repercussions. Um, however, Gigaspace's Zap comes with a WAN gateway. In this screencast, we will see it in operation, not across an actual WAN where we've got a server in New York and one in London or anything like that, but we will see two separate deployments communicating across the WAN bridge. The structure of our demonstration is very simple. We basically have four deployable artifacts and two ancillary projects. Um, WAN client and WAN model are the ancillary projects. Uh, WAN model contains our service uh, and our data model. WAN client is an actual swing client that shows us the contents of one of our data grids. Then we have our two data grids here in our gateways. Um, location 1 and location 2 are, are identical except they have slightly different configurations. Um, WAN space 1 is our stateful data grid. It's our, one of our caches, basically, or not really a cache, but it is a data grid and it acts like a cache. Um, WAN space 1 basically uh, is a, a single thing that communicates with WAN gateway 1. Uh, WAN space 2 is, is exactly the same except it communicates with gateway 2. The two gateways communicate with each other. The actual uh, application itself is uh, you know, basically writing a set of WAN demo entries into a space with slight changes if they already exist. Um, basically they have a name and a value. The name is the uh, space name, so it'll be like 1 or 2 plus an integer. Um, and what, where we see this is right here. We you know, basically build a name, so it would be 1 plus a random integer 4, so it would be 1 space 4. It takes it from the, uh, from the data grid if it exists. If it doesn't, it writes it in. If it does, it modifies the value slightly and writes it back in so that we have a constantly updating uh, data set. It'll look something like um, stock prices. Not really, but it'll look something like that. Um, and our client actually runs a, a swing client that actually pulls from one of the data grids. Um, so this is all on uh, GitHub. If you look in the Gigaspace's best practices directory, um, it's in the WAN demo uh, project tree. Um, we will have scripts online so you can actually run this locally. The one that I'm running is a little bit different because it's actually deploying on two, uh, two hosts. The one that's here will actually deploy everything on local hosts so you can run everything on one machine. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at our deployment. Let's go ahead and run something. We have two machines here, uh, Osiris and Iris. Um, one is the Egyptian god of something or another, and the other one's an eye part. And thank goodness we don't have Egyptian gods of parts of eyes, uh, because then I'd have to come up with a new naming system altogether. So um, we have nothing deployed. Let's go ahead and deploy our spaces. So first we go ahead and we zip through to land location one. Let's go ahead and deploy our first one first. Um, WAN space one. Um, we tell it to deploy to group one because we want every we want our, our groups separated. So then we run a deployment. It'll go through and it's now running. You know, uh, it'll take just a few seconds because it has to look up some resources. Um, so now we see WAN space one. Let's go ahead and, and deploy WAN space two. So I'm going to zip over here. We do want to change the group to two, so the two aren't on the same machine at all. So if we want to actually see the thing running, you can see here that we have, this is what it looks like in the first space. And then we've got another space over here on a different machine altogether, which is running on Linux. So it's running at the same time. So again, you know, it's very exciting, but we see two different groups being updated. Now, if we crank up our swing client, what we'll see is a, uh, a swing, you know, a J table basically that um, displays the contents of group one. We do not have any in information for group two. It's using only the first data grid. So let's deploy our gateways to go ahead and get things communicating across a bridge. So let's switch back over to location one. 
crank up in gateway one. We'll make sure that we're deploying only to the right to the right server. And it's deploying. So let's go ahead and deploy gateway two because we want the two to communicate with each other. So we're flipping over and we're deploying gateway two. Let's make sure we're deploying on the right servers again because everything's going to be host based. Now, if we look over here, what we're going to see in, in a little bit is we're going to actually see the two elements being replicated across. So remember, we're using only lookup group once. So we're only talking to one of the servers. And right now, they're actually running a synchronization step to deploy to, uh, to replicate the information. They take a little bit to start up. Um, and there you can see them doing the location. And there, now we have data being replicated across. Now, if you'll notice here, the data items are being updated in both data sets. Um, but we're, when we look here at the local uh, cluster, this, this is uh, entry one. This is the first, the first space. We're only updating the elements from one space, but we're seeing both sets of data being updated here. So what we have is we have uh, two separate deployments um, running on two separate machines. They don't have any visibility between them because the, the lookups are different. Um, so they're two physically disparate uh, clusters communicating across a gateway and sending data across in real time. And you can actually configure how much real time is actually there. But, um, you know, the idea is to have an efficient gateway system so that you could have servers in New York and London and Hong Kong all communicating with each other and keeping their data updated without having to have a dedicated wide area network with you know all the all the costs that are associated there that doesn't mean you don't want to have those things because there are certainly circumstances under which you would want to uh, incur that expense depending on you know uh, reliability and things like that but for a lot of systems this is an easy way to have high scalability and high availability for your data without having a huge cost in hardware and uh, platforms as a service uh, costs. Uh, hopefully this has been instructive. This is again available on GitHub um, under the Gigaspaces Best Practices uh, project. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much.